This is Steve Brooker, also known as Mud God. I actually want to change history. Steve and his sidekick Rock are part of a licensed group of amateur archaeologists known as Mudlarks. Hey, hey. Ah. They scour Britain's foreshores, searching not for buried treasure, but hidden history. Oh, oh yes! Tasty! Wicked! That Look is at that. tasty! They've agreed to share with me their decades of knowledge and experience. Come here, man. I love that. Our adventures on the foreshore will propel us on historical quests that range from the sublime... Whoa! Yes! ...to the painful... Who the land that stay in line? ...to the downright disgusting... <laughs> ...as we become... This week, we're leaving the Thames foreshore far behind and heading to Alderney, one of the smallest of the Channel Islands. During the Second World War, the entire population was forced to evacuate when the Germans invaded. We're in with the Jerrys, we're here. They turned Alderney into a vast concrete fortress with a network of bunkers and tunnels and even a concentration camp. People did die here, they were, they were murdered here. So, in today's episode, we dig deeper into the island's dark past. It's fascinating, isn't it, though? Well, it really is. This is Alderney in the Channel Islands. One mile wide, three miles long, yet I think the venue for one of the most fascinating, yet nearly forgotten chapters in all of British history. At the start of the war, with the Germans just eight miles away on the coast of France in Cherbourg, the entire population of Alderney was evacuated back to mainland Britain. Then the Germans occupy. They spend the next five years pouring tons of concrete on the place and digging miles and miles of bunkers and tunnels to make this part of their Atlantic wall defense. With all that history happening here, we should have some rich pickings as we go looking around for artifacts and remnants of World War II. That's if we can find Steve first. Steve! <laughs> Another bunker. It doesn't matter where you go yet, it's just full of bunkers. Absolutely everywhere, isn't it? Between 1940 and 1945, 3,500 German troops were stationed here. So today we're concentrating our search around Bibet Head, a heavily defended bunker complex situated on the northwest coast. And to help us today with our search, my mudlarker mate Rob Goodwin is going to be our guide. So, what are we going to find? Well, we're going to find uh, lots of military stuff, of course. Yeah. Um, the English military were here, or have been here for ages, and Victorian fought there. Um, so we're going to find Georgian, um, Victorian, yeah. and onwards British stuff. Yeah. We're going to find uh, German military bits and pieces, bullets, buttons, badges, all the usual paraphernalia. Yeah. Um, I've found toothpaste tubes, German toothpaste tubes. And how does it compare to the Thames? Not as muddy. Not as muddy. <laughs> and it doesn't smell. That's the other thing. That's true. Yeah, it doesn't smell. Yeah, what does? Hey, so if he's, if he's in the same area, yeah, it's going to be like being on the tent. But, so what? Yeah. We're going to go do Let's a bit? Let's do it. Let's go find, find some stuff. Yep. Come chance. Cool. Let's go. As we're on soil, not sand today, metal detectors will be key to our search for all things military. Probably German. We're going to get find thousands and thousands of these. So, uh, I've actually noted on my detector what number this is. So, if it gets boring after a while, anything I see on that number, which I think is about 39 or something, yeah, I won't be digging that anymore. Well, yeah, this here, yeah, what's this? This was a, a bunkhouse for, for some of the troops. Yeah. Just, a, just a place for the soldiers to be. What's in it? the mornings. <laughs> That's their bathroom. Wow, lap of luxury. Oh, eh? it's like a trot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Water tanks are there, look. So you get a bucket yeah. of water, fill up your sink, have a wash. En suite it ain't. Not such a great posting for the Germans then. You got one? Yeah. It's Is a logical a place. Savage TV. Yeah, people are taking their uh, jackets off in the morning to have a wash or whatever, and they're yeah, going to drop yeah, stuff, exactly. aren't they? 
Good signal. It's out. Is it? You're detecting your trowel. You know that, don't you? A coin. I thought it was a coin. It's <coughs> a button. Let's have a look. Mm. That's a German standard issue army no. button. Yep. Serious? We're, yep. We're in with the Jerry's. Well We're done, here. Mate. Well done. How can you tell that? It's so corroded, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, because you look at it, it's pebbled. Little, yeah. Little dots all over it, yeah? Yeah. And that was that was the standard issue. I mean, I always assumed that German buttons would have swastikas yeah. and eagles yeah. and things on it, but the, the the army buttons didn't. They were they were quite boring, really. Yeah. Our buttons were much better. Good find. Well done, mate. Well done. Awesome. Shows you here. Yep. Cool. More? Yep. Next. What a great find. Evidence of the occupation is everywhere on this island. Rock! We got. Dunno, it's weird. It's German. Let's have a look. Hey, more German writing. Well done. How was that say on there? Oh, is your German good? Well, it's it's not bad. Einstein lamp. So it could be a component from maybe a torch. I don't know. I'm guessing. It looks Lamp. a bit. It, well, yeah, yeah, it could be. That. Yeah. It looks a bit fuse-like. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think it's good. Fine. Very good, mate. Well done. We have to find out what it actually says, though. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. I'm going to go that way. Okay. Right. I'll catch you later. Cheers, mate. Yeah, best of luck. With such a wealth of military gear down here, I'm sure we'll have some great finds on our island adventure. You all right, Steve? Hey! You all right, matey? Did you make it all right? Mud room. Mud moon. <laughs> you right? You bust me nose! So what are we up to? Hey, this is good, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we're on a massive fortress. We really are. So this is all concrete under here as well, is it? It is, but when you look very carefully at it, it's so well done that it yeah. just looks like an outcrop of rock. So we've got our gun emplacements here. We've got effectively, as you said, this concrete uh, outcrop, and we've got our metal detectors. History ones. Okay, you're going to let me use this this time. Yeah, you've got to learn how to use it properly. OK. Now, I've failed every time I've used these. I, fa I once found some... I've once found a bomb in Poland with one, and that's about it. Yeah, but that bomb was about this, this size. You're going to be finding small things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we're after, we're after sh cartridges out of yeah. guns. We're after military badges. Uh, there, there should be loads of bits and pieces here. OK. But, first of all... We're looking for remnants of the Reich. Finds pouch. OK. Bomb. Easy, Steve. Oh, you've had a good Christmas. <laughs> size of you. I'll put this on Easy, a, a 48 inch waist. Okay, nice. Then your history wand itself, yeah, works on a number sequence. Yeah. Depending on what the item is. Right. You'll get a readout. You're not going to dig anything under 40. So, okay. sweep. Okay, sweep. Keep sweep. No, you're going to, you want to grab onto something. So you're okay. going to, can you oh, hear that? Yeah. Well, you can hear that. Now, the high tones are the ones you dig and the low tones you don't bother with. When you see anything over Ooh. 40, you dig it. Whoa, whoa! What's the readout? 82. 82? Yeah. Oh, now you want to know. <laughs> do you want to be, my... be my friend? Oh, well, here we go, look. Yeah, disappointment. Is it German? It's Bavaria. It's from Bavaria. So this was it. Near Germany? It isn't. It's near Germany. <laughs> Unbelievably, this is actually a German trench built on British soil. So, as long as I can get my metal detector under control, there's no reason why I shouldn't impress Steve with something a little bit special. So you could be digging around for ages and use the machine to find the item. Ow. Ow! It really hurt. There, 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 there. Is it 17. crisp? Really crisp. Right, that's the one to dig. Wait a second, I heard... Oh, here we go. Oh. Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. Coin? No. Oh, there's loads of those here. Well, oh, there's still a bit of a result. Oh, yeah, no, no, here's a result, but there are loads of them here. Wherever you dig, you'll get those. OK, Steve is pretty hard to impress, but these bullets would have actually been fired from a rifle in World War II, so I'm chuffed with my first military find. Right, test it once more. Oi, oi! What? JB. Yeah, yeah, I found some stuff. Thank Guess you, what he's had? Look, look what I've had, Rock. Come on, then. Oh, no Steve, you're that's all he had. No, that's quality. That's that, all isn't he had. It? Wow, well yeah. done. Yeah, Johnny, you really did. Oh, well. hang on, what's that? It's like a, a demented <laughs> Alan Titmarsh garden. Yeah, there's a lot more down here, lads. There's a lot more down. I tell you what, this is this is. A, we, we should be working this trench. We should be working it like a, like like goodens. Good time to put your sprouts in. Yeah. All right, lads. 
lads, I've got to tell you, I'm feeling really, really optimistic about the finds I'm going to have now. I really have. I sort of feel I know how to use this almost better than ever. There isn't a lot of metal like we get on the foreshore. So, you know, when it is metal, hopefully it is going to be war-related. It is going to be a good find. Uh, so, um, can I have the things back from a pouch, please, Dad? Oh, you're pathetic, Steve. You really are. Coming up, Steve comes across more than he bargained for. This is one of those times when it could be dangerous. And we dig deeper into the island's dark past. It's fascinating, isn't it, though? It really is. This week, mud god Steve Brooker and I are on Alderney in the Channel Islands. Whoa, whoa. What's the readout? 82. 82? Yeah. During the Second World War, the Germans invaded and turned Alderney into a vast concrete fortress to defend against Allied forces. Using a workforce of 6,000 slave labourers, they built a staggering 900 bunkers and miles of tunnels that crisscrossed the entire island, some of which remain hidden from view. See you later. See ya. <clears throat> if I hear a bang, I know yeah. it's been mined, yeah? So I've got these... They look like windows, Rob. I've got one, two, three of them, but where you'd imagine, like, the glass to be is just wooden, wooden panels. Any ideas? Yeah, I think they were... Um, where they'd have, like, they stack their... lean their rifles up in them or, you know, supplies stuck in the wall, in niches on the wall. Yeah, do you know what? These are rifle height, I would say, so it would be the perfect size. That's amazing. Look at the walls. See if there's anything written on the walls or stenciled. Sometimes there is. There's nothing here. Uh, oh, hang on, what's this? Yay! Well, I've got a big capital L and then one, four, four. That's the number of the bunker. Wow. That's incredible. It's, just, it's so, it's so uh, sort of legible still after all these years. That was amazing. Right, I want to go find some more tunnels now. <laughs> Rob certainly knows his stuff, and it's about time he showed me and Johnny round the rest of the island's historical highlights. Johnny. This is Johnny. Hi. Nice to meet you, Rob. This bunker was used to house artillery and is strengthened with concrete walls two feet thick. OK. So what was this then, Rob? Uh, this was a gun placement. Okay. It had been a 4.7 centimetre whacking break the coastal artillery gun there to protect the harbour. Like, an, like the guns of Navarone. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it's a it's a whopper. It's got a big swivel. It's going on here. Yeah, but that was a little one compared to some of the uh, guns okay. on the island. Yeah. Well, we're down here. Yeah, go right. A network of nine tunnels connect all the fortifications on Alderney. They were built by a task force of slave workers from Eastern Europe, and later. Jewish prisoners who were kept in labour and concentration camps on the island. Quite chilling when you see a Star of David there. Uh, yeah, I know the one you, you think did, this, yeah. is, this might be all anyone's got to remember me by. I found that strangely reaffirming, though, in a way, because if the Germans had known it was there, they'd obviously hacked it out, and so for the entire yes. war, it was sitting there, and they didn't notice. They didn't notice, right, yeah. yeah. In this one, Rob? Some of these underground tunnels and bunkers stretch for up to half a mile and were built as part of Hitler's Atlantic Wall, his extensive system of fortifications built along the western coast of Europe. But no one knows why so many were built. What was Hitler planning? Can you look to your left, Steve? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that, chaps. Look right at the back, in the back room. It all sits out of bed. Yeah, I think it is. How, how deep is the water? You think what else could be in there? Yeah. If, he's, if the bunk bed's in there, the Germans' bunk beds, what else could be in there? Yeah, and it looks like there's lots of stuff on top, look. Yeah. Can't you look? I can see... The, oh, I really want to get down there, Steve. So this is room 132. It's fascinating, isn't it, though? Well, it really is. Right, right, let's get back down, lads. I'm getting the willies. Later, our intrepid rock had both the guts and the kit to brave the murky water and go much further than we did. He found the remains of what appears to be a ladder, wash basin, and German writing on the wall, deepening the mystery of what happened down here. To get a further insight as to why this small island was so important to the Germans, I've arranged to meet local historian and expert in all things Alderney, Francis Jeans. Right, lovely to meet you. I'm Johnny. Um, 
So what happened after the start of the war then? Uh, uh, Oldney was instantly evacuated, was it? Uh, no, the, when the war started in 39, uh, everybody here thought that they would be here to defend the island. It wasn't until they realised that France was going to be so heavily invaded that they thought that the situation might change. OK, so when do they decide, let's clear out, this is, this is no longer cool? Well, the British army left the island at sort of the beginning of June 1940. Okay. Then they very quickly left at the beginning of June. And on sort of June 22nd, there was a public meeting and it was decided that everyone should go or everybody should stay and everybody voted to go. How did they leave? Uh, they had an hour, so they had to pack everything, take everything they needed. They also had to pick up their relatives, you know, mm. elderly people who were all over the island. Obviously, not everybody had cars, so everyone had to collect each other. In fact, one lady forgot her newborn baby daughter and no. made it all the way to the boats before realising and had to leave the boat and go back for her. That's quite an oversight. Yeah, I think it shows what chaos there was in that yeah. hour before they got to the boat. But at that stage, they, they must have been able to see the Germans in France. Yeah, there are reports from people who live down on Longy, which is the nearest point to France, and they said they could see Germans coming in over the, over the coast and through binoculars they could see them on the fields on France. There's an enormous amount of work done here then, mm. during the course of the war. Who, who did the building? Uh, it started off with um, sort of conscripted labour, uh, where they were sort of told they would come over and they would be paid some wage. That where never from? happened. Uh, from all over, mostly Russian, mm. uh, Polish, uh, and then as the war went on and the labour camps set up and then the concentration camp here, mm. uh, you got more Jewish people as well. It was a, a, a mix of people, but predominantly Russian people. But I think that it's a staggering thing that there was actually, on British soil, a, a, a concentration camp. Yeah, I think that's the one thing that people really don't understand about yeah. the German war in the Channel Islands. There was a concentration camp here, and people did die here. They were, they were mm. murdered here, and they were murdered on British soil. So why don't we hear much about it, then? Um, it is a unique part of British history, and it is really downplayed. It's never talked about in schools mm. or, or in history books. I think it was hard for everybody involved, and the shame of having it on British soil, I think, for a long time afterwards, meant people didn't talk about it. But I mean, it really is, don't mention the Channel Islands. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. I think as it went on, people talked about it less and less. And now we're getting to a point when we realise how important it is to remember what happened here. OK. Listen, thank you very much uh, for very talking welcome. to us, uh, Fran. It's absolutely yeah. fantastic. I'm going to go and rejoin Steve now with uh, a metal detector, which hopefully will be, uh, uh, will be equally as fascinating. But I doubt it, because it involves Steve. <laughs> To shore up their defences, the Germans planted over 30,000 mines on Alderney. And although after the occupation over 1,000 Germans were kept on the island, to help the British troops clear them up, it's unclear how many still remain. Now, this is one of those times when it could be dangerous. Heavily fortified, Alderney had thousands and thousands of landmines. Now, all of a sudden, I've got a really good signal, but I've dug down, as you've just seen, and I've got a fin there. You know, it could be a mortar, it could be anything. So that's one that you just leave well alone. Time to make a swift exit, methinks. Let's see what the rest of the mud crew have turned up. We had up. Hello, mate. A few bits, how about you? Yeah, bits and pieces. That's light bulb. Yeah. Uh, 303. That's the best one so far. Oh, hi. <laughs> that's the baby, that's all we need. <laughs> that's it. It's German. <laughs> I wonder what that means, we'll have to find out. Oh, fine. Yeah. No, something about gardening oh, or something. I don't know. At least it's German. Yeah, that's pretty We're good. We're getting there. Yeah. How about you? I've had uh, what looks to me like a livery button, but it could be military. Yeah. It does look livery, doesn't it? Yeah. That could be British, you know. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. And we've got that's the same that kind of age as well. That yeah, good time, age, yeah. isn't it? So yeah. you never know. Cool. Good find, though. Yeah, very good, mate. Well done. See you in a bit, mate. Have a look. That's rather nice, isn't it? Yeah. Have a look at that. What you got? It's a cat badge. No the way. stuff you found. Oh, my God. What's that, in German? Fantastic, isn't it? I haven't got a clue. No, no, I haven't got a clue. Either. I've never seen that type before. No, I never. Well, yeah, think about it. Look, we've got a trench here. Yeah. Right near the bunker. Could be, can it? I've got to admit, it does look a bit English. But I, think yeah, looks, yeah. I think it looks English, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A good little find, though. Very good, mate, very good. Yeah, you had uh, anything? Well, I've got a 1945 penny. 
Now, this penny is post-war, so could have belonged to one of the evacuees who returned to Alderney after its liberation. And a Louis XIV. No way. Well yeah. done. That's quite nice. That's yeah. What kind of date is that, do you know? Uh, Mid-1600s, if I recall. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so we, we, yeah, we've got age here now. Well, it's, it's, yeah. It predates everything that's here, uh, in terms of the fortifications, anyway. It's the equivalent of a farthing. Is it? Right, yeah. Okay. And you think, yeah, we could have Roman here as well. Yeah, well, yeah. That's good fun. Well done. Yeah. Superb. Well, I'm going to head up this way. Okay. Yep. Give it a blast. I'll catch you guys later. Yeah, man. Yeah, see ya. Best of luck. My mud crew have unearthed a few gems around the bunkers, and I'm looking forward to showing Johnny what we've had up. You right, lads? Right, but. You right, boys? You right, Rock? Hello, mate. How you doing? What you had up? Where you been? I've been chatting to Fran. Really interesting. Yeah? Do you want to curse me? Really, Alden is a lot more special than we thought. Why is that? Because it is the only bit of British territory, the only bit of British soil yeah. that's ever actually been properly and fully and totally invaded and conquered. The population God. left, yeah, yeah. this was totally German. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and this is perhaps why we never really hear about Alderney, because it was to no one's benefit to talk about it. Yeah. So that's why it is such a forgotten chapter. Anyway, give me something fascinating. Fly button. Well, hey. A bad one. Let's have a look. It is a fly button, isn't it? What else have I got to show you? I've had a cat badge. Have you? Yeah. Not a very good one. German. No, I've got German. English again, which is really strange. Why, why are we getting all this English stuff? Where we well, got... because there was, there, was, there was three and a half thousand Victorian troops garrisoned here, remember? There you go, look. Nice one. It is, yeah. You have it's, that up there? Well, yeah. actually, I don't think that is a cat badge, Steve. Don't you? No, it's from an epaulette. And you're so sure about that? I would say it's, it's from an epaulette, because you very rarely get a crown on a cat badge. It's not going to be regimental. Yeah. I think it's much more likely to have gone as a, as a as ranking signet. Okay. So it might be a major. Come on, let's go down the pub. Are we going to the pub? Yeah. yeah. Coming up, our Mudmen journey takes us to Guernsey. But it's not all plain sailing. <laughs>